Harmonized Olivet Discourse, a sermon of Jesus recorded in the Synoptic Gospels. This is my attempt to harmonize the Olivet Discourse recorded in the Synoptic Gospels. I've taken the narratives from Matthew, Mark, and Luke and combined each to give the complete account. I was inspired to do this after listening to a teaching by Derek Prince on Matthew 24. I know others have attempted to do this. Dan Duvall's attempt is critical in his exposition on the end times in his book Kingdom of Government and the Promise of Sheep Nations. The goal is to place into the same sequence each perspective with the others, while adding the details of each which are left out of the others. In doing this, it becomes necessarily redundant and does not read like a single story being told. In order to know which was the source book, I've color-coded Matthew in black, Mark in blue, and Luke in green. The references are from Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. At the end of each passage, I identify which verse from each of these chapters I have taken. For instance, the first passage is footnoted as Matthew 1, Mark 1, Luke 5, which means I referenced Matthew 24, 1, Mark 13, 1, and Luke 21, 5. Also, some portions of Luke 17, which covers the same topic, are included, in which case the chapter is also included in the reference. Anything in rust red and surrounded by brackets is my own editorial notes on the passage, or added text for clarity and readability. I'm putting this in the public sphere not only for your use and enjoyment and education, but also for feedback on how I might do this better, what I might have missed. I'd like to thank my brothers with whom I've studied Daniel and Revelation several times, Jeff Cerny, Damon Newton, and Mark Newton. They each contributed research to this project. Thanks, brothers. As he was going out of the temple, Jesus left the temple area and was going on his way when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him. Some were talking about the temple, that it was decorated with beautiful stones. One of his disciples said to him, Teacher, look, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. But Jesus responded and said to him and them, Do you not see all these things, which you are observing these great buildings? Truly I say to you, the days will come when not one stone here will be left upon another, which will not be torn down. And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, the disciples, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, came to him privately, saying, Teacher, tell us, when will these things happen, and what will be the sign of your coming, the sign when all these things are going to be fulfilled, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place, and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, the Christ, and the time is near, and they will mislead many people do not go after them. And when you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars and revolts, see that you are not alarmed, for those things must take place first. But that is not yet the end. The end will not follow immediately. Then he continued by saying to them, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be massive earthquakes, and there will be in various places plagues, famines, and earthquakes. And there will be terrible sights and great signs from heaven, but all these things are merely only the beginning of birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them. And they will hand you over to tribulation and kill you. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child. And children will rise against parents, and they will betray one another, and hate one another, and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And many false prophets will rise up and mislead many people. And because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will become cold. And at that time, many will fall away. But the one who endures to the end is the one who will be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom must first be proclaimed to all nations throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place where it should not be, let the reader understand. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Whoever is on the housetop whose belongings are in the house must not go down to get things, anything, out of his house. And whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. Remember Lot's wife. But woe to those women who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. Moreover, pray that when you flee it will not be winter or on the Sabbath. 
for then there will be a great tribulation, such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world, the creation which God created, until now, nor ever will again. Whoever tries to make his life secure will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. And if the Lord had not shortened those days, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, whom he chose, he shortened the days. Then if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or he's over here, see there, or see here, do not believe him. Don't follow or run after them, for false Christs and false prophets arise, and will provide great signs and wonders, so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance. So if they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out, or behold, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe them. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, from horizon to horizon and lights up the sky, so will the coming of the Son of Man be in his day. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. But in those days, immediately after the distress of those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not shed its light. The stars will be fallen from the sky and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming in clouds of heaven with great power and glory. He will send out the angels with the loud trumpet and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven, from one end of the sky to the other. Then he told them, Before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it, therefore, in your minds, not to meditate beforehand how to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are in the country enter it. For these are the days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days. For there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And he told them a parable. Look at, learn the parable from the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as its branches have become tender and sprouts its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you too, when you see these things happening, recognize that he is near right at the door. The kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or an hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. It will be the same as it was in the days of Lot. People went on eating, drinking, buying, selling, planting, building. But on the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be like that on the day the Son of Man is revealed. At that time, there will be two men in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. On that night, two will be in one bed. One will be taken, the other will be left. Two women will be grinding grain at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Watch out, stay alert, for you do not know when the appointed time is, which day your Lord is coming. It is like a man away on a journey who upon leaving his house and putting his slaves in charge, assigning to each one his task, also commanded the doorkeeper to stay alert. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what time the night the thief was coming, he would have been on the alert and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. Who then is the faithful and sensible slave whom his master put in charge of his household slaves 
to give them their food at the proper time. Blessed is that slave whom his master finds doing so when he comes. Truly I say to you, that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that evil slave sets in his heart, my master is not coming for a long time, and he begins to beat his fellow slaves and eats and drinks with those habitually drunk, then the master of that slave will come on a day that he does not expect, and at an hour that he does not know, and he will cut him in two and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Therefore stay alert, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening, at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, so that he does not come suddenly and find you asleep. What I say to you, I say to all, stay alert. Be on your guard so that your hearts will not be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life, and that this day will not come on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of all the earth. But stay alert at all times, praying that you will have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. For this reason you must be ready as well, for the Son of Man is coming in an hour when you do not think he will. Now during the day he was teaching in the temple, but at evening he would go out and spend the night on the mountain that is called Olivet. And all the people would get up very early in the morning to come to him in the temple to listen to him.